Hello everyone. My name is Elisa and I am the Public Education and Awareness Coordinator for the Alzheimer's Society. So thank you for joining us for our holiday tips for care partners. So we'll get started on um, the presentation. So the presentation that I'm going to be sharing with you are top 10 tips for enjoying the holidays for families affected by dementia. So a few things uh, to remember is what's best for the person living with dementia. And are we trying to keep the tradition for us or for them? You wanna be present in the moment and you wanna make things uh, simple for the person living with dementia. So a little uh, communication tips for the family. A good reminder for everyone, especially those who may not see the person as often. So you wanna maintain a high level of optimism at all times. You wanna reduce as many distractions as you can. Uh, when you're communicating with them, make sure that things are not happening around them at the same time. You wanna have one-on-one -on -one conversations so that um, their focus is on you and they're paying attention. You wanna gain their attention. So face the person, make eye contact, um, be aware of your tone and body language. You wanna talk slow and relaxed, be clear and concise. So again, talk slowly and clearly using short and simple sentences. Use closed ended questions, which are focused and can be answered with a yes or a no, or with a choice. So example, do you want coffee or tea? You wanna be patient. Um, the person, they may, may need more time to process um, any kind of information or try and form their answers to your questions and avoid quizzing. So tip number one that we're gonna share is we avoid the shopping mall madness. So if you have to go to the mall, try and go on off times or times that are not so busy with a lot of people, um, you wanna consider the best times for the person. So maybe that's first thing in the morning or maybe that's um, in the afternoon, that's better for them. If you see the individual with dementia getting stressed or overwhelmed, then that might be a good time um, to leave the mall. Use the washroom before going. If you're in the mall and they have to go to the washroom, consider using the family one. If appropriate, consider a wheelchair rental if they have a hard time walking or they can't walk too far. Avoid the mall and try shopping at a local plaza or downtown area that's not so busy with a lot of people. If people offer to run your errands for you, you don't try taking them up on the offer. And maybe you want to consider small shops or online shopping. Um, I know, you know, a lot of people don't do the online shopping, but there are a lot of local little shops that um, might be, you know, an easier place to do some of your Christmas shopping. Tip number two is out on the town. So if you're going out for dinner, um, anything like that, you want to try to avoid, avoid um, try to arrange, sorry, the reservations instead of waiting in line, just because if the wait um, is quite long, then um, you're going to see them get really frustrated. Go at non-peak times with a little less busy. Um, try and get like a quiet restaurant where, you know, there's not a lot of things happening around them. Uh, try ordering ahead to minimize the wait if some will do that. Um, when you're in there, try sitting in a booth. It's a little bit more uh, private and it'll limit the distractions around them. Try and sit where the washroom is in sight. Go to the washroom before you, before you go to the restaurant or ask if there's a family washroom available. Consider the lighting. Is it bright enough? Is it not bright enough? Um, some restaurants, if they have those fluorescent lights, you know, you're going to maybe see the individual uh, get a headache or squint or get frustrated. Um, so you want to keep those little things in mind. If they're having a hard time trying to pick uh, what to eat, then maybe give them like a choice of one or two things that, you know, that they're really, they really like, uh, you know, they're, you know, them best. So, um, you know, go with what, what you feel. Tip number three is family festivities, parties, potlucks, and planning. 
So we want to try to maintain a low key, quiet atmosphere. We all know with the holidays, you know, just right around us that there is a lot going on, whether it's uh, family, friends, you know, coming over to, to have dinner parties and stuff like that. So uh, we want to just keep that in mind that for the person living with dementia, you want to have it quiet without, you know, a lot of distractions and stuff like that. You want to limit the background noise. So if you've got the TV going, got the radio going, someone's playing on the computer, um, that's a lot for them um, to take in and it might be overstimulating for them. Um, try and have a quiet space for the person with dementia to go to if they're feeling a little bit overstimulated and they just need that break. Create separate area for children to play. Um, you know, there's children all around with family and friends coming over. So if the children are being loud, to have that designated space for them to go just to kind of wind down a little bit. Uh, the person living with dementia, you know, try and have like a space for them to walk around. Um, you know, if they want to walk, you know, around the kitchen or just around the house that they need to get up and, you know, stretch their legs. So just make sure that there is space for that. Uh, try to take turns talking at the table and not all at once so that the individual can try to keep to keep up with the conversation. Uh, you want to plan ahead. So let family and friends know about the adaptations being made, depending on how often they see the individual. Uh, so you, you might want to just give them the heads up about what is going on. And you want to watch for cues. So if the person is feeling overwhelmed, anxious, or frustrated, that would be the sign that it's either time to go or they need that quiet space um, where they can just go by themselves. And limit the visits accordingly. So it doesn't have to be a full day. Um, it's up to you whether it's, you know, one person coming a day or, you know, two people coming a day. It all depends on how much um, the person living with dementia can handle. So just be mindful of those cues when it's um, kind of enough is enough. Tip number four, if you're going on vacation. So if you, you want to plan a manage manageable vacation. So advise people of memory issues. So flight attendants, uh, people at the airport so that they're aware. You want to prepare the ID for the person living with dementia. So have it on hand, know where it is. Um, never leave the person with dementia alone, especially if um, they like to wander or take off. Always have them with you just so that um, they're, they're safe. Prepare your traveling companion, um, time your travel so that um, you know how long it's gonna take to get to that place. You wanna anticipate and avoid delays. Plan ahead for restroom use. So whether it's, you know, you're taking an airplane or you're traveling, like you wanna, you wanna make sure those stops um, have what you're looking for allow extra time depending on weather or, you know, traffic even. Maintain familiar eating patterns. So if the person living with dementia has a snack in the morning, you know, and then lunch and then a snack in the afternoon, you wanna make sure that they follow the same routine because then they're, they're used to that. Um, so depending on how their day is laid out, you, that's how you're going to kind of time your travel. So make sure that, you know, you're stopping every so often so that they can get out and stretch or use the washroom or, you know, get something to eat if it's their snack time. Um, and have faith in your knowledge, your judgment and your experience. Um, you know, you, you know, your, you know, your guide and you know, what's right for the person. So follow that. And we always want to consider the needs of the person living with dementia. So consider your expectation. What are you placing um, on them? You want to stick with the familiar. Don't try and change uh, things as that can be really hard for the person. You want to stick with what they're familiar with. Um, so it's a little bit easier to, to manage. Try and stay away from those busy places. Lots of people, distractions, lots of noise. Um, so keep that in mind, keep your vacation simple, it, whether it's, you know, you're going somewhere on an airplane or you're traveling, 
try not to have like a lot of things happening in the day because it will it will be too much uh, for them. Consider a short trip. So if you're going to see family, maybe just go a couple days um, instead of staying a week or two weeks. And develop a list of contacts for your for your route, just so um, you know if anything was to happen, you could call them and they're they're aware of where you're going or um, what you've got going on so that you can call and keep them keep them up to speed. Gift giving. So you want to encourage simple, practical, and useful gifts for the person with dementia. So um, whether it's easy pull-on pants for them or, you know, easier shirts, um, you can get a calendar to help with their memory. Um, if they like word search or crossword puzzles, um, those are all really good options for them. And warn people about difficult or unsafe gifts. Um, you know, maybe before they were, they were getting all kinds of gifts that they were able to use, right? So as time goes and um, their, their, their dementia progresses, then they have to um, kind of scale back on the gifts, right? So that it's safe and something that they can use. Have the person participate in gift giving based on their ability. So if it's wrapping presents, writing cards, um, helping say you're cooking or baking and you want them to help you, you know, put um, put like the cookie mix into, you know, cupcakes or onto the tray. If that's something that they have the ability to do, then um, get them involved in that. Some of those memories maybe will spark and then it could be like a conversation uh, starter. Consider an experience. So give someone a gift and enjoy it with them at a later time. So if the person enjoys swimming or maybe going to see a movie, those kind of experience, if um, it's something that, again, they have the ability to do, um, something that it's, it's a nice memory for them. And location. So if your family member is living in a care facility and you plan to bring them home for the holidays, plan to have one or two half day trials in advance which is a really good, uh, really good tip just to see how they're going to manage from leaving um, the care facility and going to the home. Um, you know, sometimes that's quite a big change for them when they've been in, you know, uh, the facility for quite some time. So, you know, doing the trial will be good. And then that way you can adapt um, to what you see on those trials. If your family member does not react well with this change, consider having a holiday celebration with them at the care facility instead. Most facilities host activities or have space for private get togethers. So maybe bring in um, you know, some family to the care facility and have a little um, you know, Christmas, Christmas party with your loved one. Um, you know, you could decorate, you can bring in, I'm sure all kinds of little you know, goodies just so that they feel um, involved as well and if it's easier if it's easier for for the person living with dementia to have that in the care facility instead of taking them outside then I mean we all have to adapt to that and then for persons living at home consider the time that works for them so if they if they are better in the morning then have have something in the morning if they're better in the evening then adapt to that time as well and you want to um, evaluate your plans for the entire day. If the morning is busy, adding an afternoon, uh, maybe too much. So it's kind of it kind of goes on what you have planned and what works for them. Um, so again, like maybe afternoon is better. So maybe have a quieter morning so where they can rest and um, just a little bit easier for them. And then if the afternoon is busy, you've got family coming, you've got supper going on, um, then that might be a better option. And then you wanna adjust expectations. So have a meeting, um, you know, face-to-face -face or by phone to discuss major holiday celebrations and what is realistic. Do only what you can reasonably manage. Don't do anything extra if you find it too much. Um, the holidays are busy. 
enough. So by adding more stuff to your plate, it's just, it could be overwhelming. Familiarize others with the situation with a letter. So like your family and friends, um, just so that they understand what the situation is and that their expectations are realistic. So they may not have seen uh, your loved one, you know, that's living with dementia for quite some quite some time and they don't know kind of where they're at in in it. So by talking to them and really explaining to them what is going on, um, they would have a better kind of a better understanding when they see the person. Um, ask for help and support. That's a huge one. Be prepared to let go of expectations of how things should go. I know, you know, I'm um, I like things to go a certain way and I'm sure a lot of us are like that but then you know we have to we kind of have to take that step back and and think like you know it's it's too much for the person living with dementia we need to just scale it back a little bit and not be so um so busy and always on the move because it's not good for them they get overwhelmed and stressed and whatnot so pick and choose which traditions are most meaningful to everyone. So whether it's Christmas, Easter, birthdays, um, and maybe do um, something a little bit more on those days and something a little bit smaller on the other ones that are maybe not so meaningful to you. And amongst the flurry of the holidays, it is important to continue with a routine and do limit drastic changes. So again, person living with dementia, you know, routine and, um, Familiar, familiar things are really important to them. So if you can stick to the routine of what they do in their everyday, um, in their everyday, then it's going to go a little bit more smooth. Once you, you know, once you do those like drastic changes, um, it's really hard on the person and you're going to see, you're going to see some, either it's behavior or, you know, they're stressed and overwhelmed. So we want to just, limit as much as possible and what's more easier for them. And encourage participation. So you want to involve the person in safe, manageable preparations. You want to maintain normal daily routines. You want to build on past traditions and memories. So say the person living with dementia, you know, they used to make cookies or used to bake for the holidays by by including them in, in those preparations, the memories will start to spark. And like I said, it could be, um, it could be a conversation. And have the person stick on bows if wrapping is too complicated, which is such an easy little, little fix, right? If they can't, um, if they don't have the ability to help with the wrapping, um, they can do the bows or they can, you know, do the little tags on, on the gifts. Try gift bags and tissue paper instead of wrapping paper, which might be a little bit more easier for them. Simplify baking cookies by using slice and bake variety. Um, so they have a lot of those at the grocery stores, which are really you know, simple and easy to use. So that might be another option for them. Read cards together and maybe talk about, you know, who sent Christmas cards and you know, talk about the memories that you had with them. And then, you know, they may have something to say about that too. Drive around to see holiday lights. Sing holiday songs that they used to sing. Um, you know, Christmas is, is a joyous time and it, it brings back a lot of memories with family and friends and, you know, childhood memories. Um, so just by talking and, you know, singing songs, it's such a, it's such a great way to have them included in all of this. Um, talk about the people who will be coming to visit so that they're aware and they, they know that they're coming just so it's not a big surprise to them. Um, if you have old photo albums, you know, look through the photo albums and explain who people are and what you did and how you're kind of connected to them. And reminisce together. So, um, like I said, you know, sharing memories from the past can bring families together and make the holidays more meaningful. Uh, looking through photographs or seasonal music or the smell of cinnamon. Um, you know, a lot of those have memories that go along with them. So it's such a nice, um, such a nice thing to be able to be included in. Just like flowers, 
um, I find that when I smell, just smelling the flowers, right? It brings me back to my childhood where my grandmother was such um, a great, um, she loved flowers and she, she was so good at ha having like her garden. So that's the memory that I get when I smell flowers. And I'm sure, you know, we all have um, memories that we can talk about when, you know, cinnamon or Christmas is a huge one for me, uh, you know, very family oriented and, you know, it just brings me back to those, those times when I was just a little one. And, you know, consider, you know, spending some one-on-one -on -one time with that individual with dementia, just in a quiet space, you know, talking about family or what comes to mind. Um, it just really shows that you're listening and that you care. And number 10 is a big one. You want to take time for yourself. You know, the holidays are so busy that we, you know, we tend to take care of everyone else, but um, we need to take care of ourselves, especially, you know, the care partner. Um, if you don't take care of yourself, you're going to run into uh, a burnout and we want to avoid that. So you want to ask for help um, or if someone offers help, take it. I know sometimes it's really hard to take that help because you just want to do it yourself, but that will give you just a little time to yourself where you know, you could just have some downtime or have a cup of coffee or just sit, you know, just sit and watch TV or listen to the music while, you know, someone's offering to help. Take time to relax, whether that's a walk or a bath or reading a book or just something, something for you. And remind yourself that I will take quality time for myself. I will take proactive steps to reduce my stress level. I will spend only what I can afford. I will share the care with other family members or friends. I will strive to understand my negative feelings and emotions. I will enjoy myself, but in moderation, and I will not inflate my expectations of the season. And how can you help? Um, so we're always looking for volunteers for a lot of our different events that we have going on. Um, we, do, we have a lot of like booths around the community that, you know, we're always looking for people to come and help us. Um, we have to fundraise a portion of what we get funded. So, you know, we ask, you know, companies to have just down days and then whatever you make from that can be donated to us. Um, you know, bake sales, uh, grad sales, anything that people can, you know, fundraise just a little bit. Um, you want to support family and friends that, you know, you know, are living with dementia or know someone that, you know, that has it. Um, so, and call us up and, you know, request materials from us. We have a lot of resources and um, uh, like flyers and all kinds of stuff. And then donate, um, you know, at our booth, we have donation boxes and um, that people can donate or online through our website. So that is the end of the holiday, uh, holiday tips presentation. My contact information is on the screen. Um, if you have any questions or anything at all um, throughout the presentation that you didn't, you just wanted clarification or maybe you wanted some, you know, other ideas, feel free to give us a call. Um, we are in the office Monday to Friday, 8.30 to 4.30. And um, we are here for you with whatever you need. So I, you know, I wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And, um, you know, spend time with family, take time for yourself. Um, really just enjoy the, the season with whatever you have uh, planned. So thank you very much for watching the presentation. And I look forward to uh, connecting with you in the new year.